my cars. Get amazing prices on the brands you love at Micro Center. Micro Center has over 30,000 items in stock, including desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, and more. Not sure which parts to choose for your next build? Then use Micro Center's custom PC builder to find compatible parts, create your parts list, add them to your cart, and use same day pickup at one of Micro Center's 25 locations nationwide. And if you're not comfortable building it, one of Micro Center's professional builders can build it for you as fast as same day for a fee. And if you need ideas for a build, then head to Micro Center's Build Showcase for great build inspiration or submit your build for others to see. To see everything that Micro Center has to offer, click the link in the description below. All right, guys, today here's what I've got going on. We are going to assemble the Alpine Racing uh, TRX sim rig from well, Track Racer. So Track Racer reached out to me actually a while ago asking if I wanted to take a look at one of their racing frames. And I've been wanting to build one for here in the studio now for quite a while, because all three of us here in the studio, um, we're car guys. We like to drive fast around tr circles and stuff and tracks, but you know what we can't afford to do is wreck our cars. But we can do it in VR and we can do it on the gaming stuff, the computer, and just hit reset when we screw up. But here's the thing, I want the ultimate realistic feel. So what Track Racer's done, they sent us their Alpine Racing. This isn't the blue one, unfortunately. It's the black one, but that's fine. It's okay, because I guess Alpine hasn't been doing great in F1 lately anyway, so we'll just rep black instead of the blue. <clears throat> but they've also talked to Moza about sending us some stuff. So we have a Moza package. I don't know what's in here, because the other half of the equation here is not just what racing sim are you using, by that I mean the frame and the seat, What's your wheel setup? Is it a belt drive? Is it a direct drive? Is it just a cheap like G92816 or whatever they call it now from Logitech? What's your pedals and all that? So I'm currently using at home an Obato Revolution that I got back in like 2013, 2014 uh, with uh, club sport stuff from Fanatec, which isn't bad. It's just, it's definitely aged. Um, the, Steering wheel likes to shut itself off every now and then. And I've already had to go in there and like fix some solder joints as it is. So. It was time to upgrade some stuff. Now we also, you guys should go and check out the video we talked about with the uh, Asatec Invictus pedals because Asatec, the owners of Asatec, which you know, the AIO company, they're also huge into uh, auto racing and stuff. So they kind of came out with their own line of racing sim stuff. And I don't believe there's gonna be pedals in here. This box does not look big enough for that. So today we might have to use the Invictus pedals with the Moza stuff and we'll see. And I still might go with Fanatec Direct Drive with their new things. I don't, there's so much that's changed since I, I have done this last, like Fanatec was like the only brand making anything that was cool and high end. Now there's so much stuff, but we need to build the frame first. So I'm gonna get Nick over here to help me. We'll just kind of take you guys along for a ride on what the assembly is like. Um, but I think the first thing we'll do actually is we'll unbox the Moza box and see exactly what's in there. Cause I'm curious now. Um, oh, these are the pedals. Okay. Those are pretty sick looking pedals. So apparently we don't have a wheel then. <laughs> So it is a fixed back seat, like a, it's either plastic, more than likely it's plastic. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the, uh... This is pretty comfy though. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a turtle yeah, right now. Yeah. It's pretty fat guy friendly. <laughs> you should try this ride, it's pretty fun. Well, yeah, it literally looks like Nick is a ninja turtle that's on his back. Yeah. Because it uses a typical side mount, seat mount, that's awesome because it means, I believe you can actually order this as well without a seat if you have one specifically that you want to use. But let's say you have a Sparco seat or something that you would, okay, let's say you're not me and you're a professional driver who is like, I have a sim rig to train and practice on in the off season. You have a very specific seat set up and feeling that you're used to. You could mount that same seat in this rig just to give it a little bit more realism. That way it matches, um, what it is that you're used to feeling. So I like that. And this, there's other pieces falling out of it. So I'm wearing different clothes because it's actually the next day. Little do we know we were actually missing two boxes. <laughs> the box we were missing is literally step one. <laughs> yeah, that step. <laughs> that one, that's where this goes. We got the R9 V2 direct drive wheel base, um, which is obviously where the steering wheel is gonna attach. And they sent us two wheels. So we got the GS V2, and then we got the actual R uh, FSR formula wheel. This one's cool because it has a screen on it. Check that out. We've got overtake and DRS button and all that. I, I, it's pretty cool because I assume this can all be like in formula, um, 
uh, or F1 racing and maybe like iRacing and these other games that have really realistic controls. I'd assume we can hold the box button and that'll lock us to like pit speed and stuff, which is pretty neat. More buttons than I'm used to on a steering wheel. This is the seat base here. <clears throat> we have adjustable positions. Um, so you can see on the side, we have a GT position and we have a Formula One position. Now the reason why it, the GT position is so much higher is because that seat that we were, I was rolling around in is so reclined. Remember F1 is almost like a laying back flat position because they can get real low into the fuselage there. But we're gonna probably realistically be doing this more uh, in a GT style racer. I'm still not 100% positive we're, I'm gonna keep that seat. I do think it's comfortable, but I kind of want a, a thicker padded leather recliner type one, honestly, because this is not a real car, so I don't need it to feel like one. But anyway, <clears throat> now what do we do? I don't think the manual's big enough. I think you guys need more. You could, okay, yeah, yeah, make it super big. There we go. Nice. So it's not a good sign when early on in the manual, you're missing hardware that it's saying that you need. So you can see it says we need the, what, WL M8 washers, because we're supposed to use these M8 by 16 screws to bolt down the sliders. Um, they didn't give us any of those. So I probably have some washers I can use of my own, but uh, we've gone through all the hardware bags and stuff and this is everything right here that came with it. So not a good sign when you're missing things that you're supposed to have. Also too, they show in that manual that the slider is like, kind of already looks like one piece and we're like, just mount the slider. Technically you have to put it together and they don't tell you any of that. So already I'm gonna give them kind of like a mid-grade slightly fail of a, of a manual because there's a lot of like scratching your head going, what exactly am I missing slash what do they mean? Um, and here's the thing, I'm kind of a little bit of an idiot. So you have to account for people like me when it comes to that. So, and if I'm like going, okay, how can I do this? And how can I, you know, monkey something together? That's not, that, that's signs of a, of a bad manual. So, so far the hardware is great, their manual, it needs work. Now we have to work on the front half of the rig because this is just the seat base half. Step by, right? Slide the collars over. But you can't slide the collars over until you remove these screws. Yeah, the manual needs some serious work. So if you, if you want to know why we're being harsh on the manual, this, is a, this was a review unit. This was sent for review and putting it together is part of the review. So the manual is, is bad. Okay, so now I have to put the pedal box in. But don't scratch it. The way they say it slides in, it doesn't. <laughs> like that way? Just it just goes in. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Even even with these loose. Yay! You did it. So that's what's gonna tie the front end together. Once those are tight, then we can tighten these up. M5 by 20. Nope. M5 by 10. It, I don't think we needed 20 mil screws to go into the steering wheel bracket slider, but again, the manual's wrong, or what we got is wrong. Something's wrong. I feel stupid. I can't. Easy. Whew. <laughs> Got it. I'm gonna go eat now. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we are going to just finish putting this together. We'll kind of keep some notes here on anything that was wrong in the manual moving forward. Um, and then we'll kind of show you all the adjustability and stuff with it. Cause there's a lot of adjustments that you can have with this thing. And that's, what's cool about it because we are three different heights and three different body types here. And my Obudo revolution rig was not adjustable other than the seat slider. And that was it. So Phil to drive with where my pedal position was, he would have to push the seat all the way forward to reach the pedals. And then the steering wheel was like against his chest, yeah. which clearly doesn't work very well. So this one now with having full independent adjustment of seat recline, or pitch, seat base pitch, I should say, uh, steering wheel pitch and distance, as well as height <clears throat> and the pedal adjustment in terms of height, tilt, and slide is just gonna be absolutely insane to be able to get everything set up exactly as you would need or want it. So we'll get this all put together, we'll come back, and then we'll give you guys some thoughts on the build quality, and then maybe we'll play around with it real quick. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. 
All right, so the TRX from Track Racer is all put together. It took us a few hours of kind of finagling and getting everything fit. Um, obviously, we have the Moza steering wheel on here, pedal system on there. I don't have it wired up yet because I'm going to be doing a very nice cable management. I'm going to get auto loom just so it matches like auto style and then they'll be going down the tubes. And what I'm going to be doing is actually putting a USB 3.0 hub right here, having all the, the steering wheel and pedal stuff. And I'm going to be doing a shifter and an e-brake, uh, hydro brake, all that stuff on here as well. And then the hub will be a single wire to the computer. And then obviously the power plug will have its own power strip and stuff on it, just like I did with my Butter Revolution. I didn't even take the sticker protectors off yet. But what we did, one of the things we did off camera is we had to kind of get everything sort of situated in a spot where I don't want to be constantly turning knobs on this and adjusting things. Um, because every time I turn a knob, it's because it's under so much tension, I see a little bit of thread material shavings kind of come out. So if we're constantly moving it around, I think eventually we'll eat through those thread threads and then it will no longer hold any position. So I don't think this was ever intended to be constantly moved around like that. I think it was intended to be kind of set and forget because we're talking about one person would normally be using it. But like I said, we're three different people here. It's at the studio. We're gonna be using it here. Phil is five foot two. Yep. I'm six foot four. Um, what I love is the fact that he's comfortable in this chair and so am I. So that is the biggest plus already. But what we did was we kind of found a spot where we could leave the, the, the pedals mounted. So we mounted the pedals as far this way as you could see. They're actually overhanging a little bit. Um, because of the fact that the pedal slider doesn't come as far towards the seat as we would have liked. So this is technically Phil's sitting position right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the camera from him. I'm gonna let him sit down. So you can see we've got the F1 wheel installed. God, I love these shifters, man. <laughs> They're so good. Ugh. And then you can see his foot position. You can see his knee position, everything. We're kind of in a hybrid F1 GT position where we're reclined a little more. Um, just what we feel comfortable. <laughs> It's a lip. My Butter Revolution, which by the way, I got that in 2016 and it was already years old at the time, like in terms of its design, gave me a seat on sliders and that was it. In fact, my 13 year old daughter would sit at the rig and then she's like this with the steering wheel and all far forward with her feet because we can't adjust anything. So I'm gonna take the seat and I'm gonna push it all the way back, which is actually not my normal sitting position. I'm gonna take the steering wheel, pull it about halfway. Tighten those down and take the pedals, push it forward about right there. And now you can see I'm ready to go. So one simulator rig that fits both of us. Now, if Nick comes over here and sits down, he probably only have to make some minor adjustments because him, he's about two inches, three inches shorter than me. This is kind of like when we did our, our office chair review, how we're like one chair fits all. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about build quality. Build quality is pretty outstanding. The hardest part is making sure that as you start to tighten things up that you keep the frame square. Because what we initially dealt with is we tightened it up, it was kind of like diamond a little bit, which was making getting all the, the wheel stuff mounted very difficult. Now a couple things we customize on this I wanna point out. This is actually part of the monitor mount and it's intentionally supposed to go here. Alternatively, you can mount it here if you want. I mounted it here just because it looks neat as like a dash. We're not gonna be using monitors directly mounted to this. It's gonna be VR for the most part. Um, secondly, you'll notice that we mounted the universal plate for the wheel upside down. And that was actually a suggestion given to us by the uh, track, track racer guys directly. So you can see it's upside down, which gets it to a more realistic steering wheel position. If it was sitting up here on top right here, That'd be a really high steering wheel position. The downside is I have to be careful when I'm getting in and out because I've bashed my knee on this a couple times already and being six foot four, that's true for any car that I drive. <laughs> so it's just like a real car at this point. We also were considering maybe trying to turn this into a hybrid driving sim, flying sim because of the fact that we have all these extra mounts that we're not using technically, we might be able to make something work for a HOTAS connection. It's so, got shifter mounts on both sides. Right. This would be for you European slash uh, Asian drivers that are on the opposite side of the road. I think Asia, a lot of Asia and a lot of Europe are opposite side, right? Although Taiwan was the correct side of the road. Adjustability is pretty neat. So we've got the steering wheel set in a height position because the front can give you height and then the rear gives you tilt. And then the whole thing can slide away or towards you kind of at a 45 degree angle. So the Moza stuff, um, we're not gonna do a video about that today. We just needed something to mount to this, otherwise we wouldn't have any position sets. Um, but we'll do another video on the Moza, especially if you guys ask for it. But you can see right here, it's got its own software that is all uh, user interface. 
which is pretty awesome because of the fact that Fanatec finally has something like this, but for the longest time, Fanatec was really awful. I'm so far really happy with this Moza setup versus my Fanatec Club Sport stuff I have at home, which is quite, quite old. So it's time for me to upgrade, and I think something like this is gonna be where we go. I've been talking about this for like years, honestly, like years. And I'm kind of happy that we finally did this. So anyway, uh, I'll put some links down below where you guys can go and check out Track Racer yourself. They have a whole bunch of different sets. This is, this is a fairly expensive uh, frame. I wanna say it's like 1200 US dollars for this frame. The Alpine stuff also is selling out as fast as they make it. They have it in an Alpine blue, which matches the F1 racing team blue. And then they have this matte black, as you can see. Um, I think that right now they are taking orders towards their next shipment. So if you guys are interested in that, then you have to get on that pre-order list. So far, based on what we see, highly worth it. We've been waiting weeks for it ourselves. Now that we have it, I think it's, uh, well, one, it matches the room perfectly you know, with the matte black. And then two, now we can truly figure out who is the best driver on the team. All right, guys, thanks again to uh, Track Racer and Moza for sending us all this stuff to check out. And uh, you guys can find all the links to this stuff down below. The, the adjustability is endless on this, honestly. We didn't even adjust the pedals as much as we could because you have tilt and height adjustments on the pedals. Same thing with the seat. As you can see, we're an F1 in the rear, but GT in the front. <laughs> yeah, we are all party in the front and business in the rear right there, you know. So uh, anyway, you just find what works for you and it's perfect. The only thing I wish it had that we might mock up ourselves is some casters just so we can roll it around the room. Or we'll just have to put those furniture sliders under it, which will work too. That's how I did that with the Obito at home. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.